Well, several pieces of the puzzle. Uh, first, we need more Pell Grants. Second, we need to have low interest direct loans. We passed a bill this year that lowered the interest rate for the moment, but it will go up in the future and we're having a GAO study done. I think that study by the Government Accounting Office is going to show that these higher interest rates, this index rate, will actually create profits. And that's not what we should be doing with student loans. We should be, if anything, subsidizing, helping our students to be able to afford college. And then we need to work with our public universities to con control the cost of tuition. And we need to consider some very different ideas. And I'm advocating an idea that is uh, kind of out of the box. It originated here in Oregon. It's called Pay It Forward. And the concept is that there is a Pay It Forward grant that would cover your tuition. And in exchange, you agree that you'll take 2 or 3% of your future earnings for two decades and put it back into the fund for the next generation. And the concept is that then if you earn a modest amount, you will put a modest amount back in and you know you can always live without two or three dollars out of a hundred. If you happen to be the next Bill Gates, you get the blessing of contributing billions to the next generation. And so it's a very different way of looking at it where students wouldn't have the, the debt burden uh, and, um, and we would collectively make sure that every student could see that there was a path to uh, pursue their dreams for their benefit, for their fa future family's benefit, and for our generally, the general benefit of our, of our future economy. Uh, so uh, that's a few thoughts on the topic. Number 232 and then 229. 232? 229 then, and then we have 241. 229. Hi, my name is Heather Thompson. I'm a 15-year resident of the Dallas. My father is mayor of Condon, Oregon. I wanted to know, um, what is your position on the Trans-Pacific Partnership? How many folks have heard of the Trans-Pacific Partnership? It is a, uh, it is a draft uh, trade agreement. Uh, it has not, the draft has not been released. So there's a series of stories that are being released as different details of leak or different rumors. And uh, there's also a conversation about whether to have a fast-track bill that would essentially grease the legislative skids for consideration of this trade agreement. Now, since we don't have the actual trade agreement available, the first point I would make is it needs to be available. It needs to be fully public, fully vetted, lots of feedback, lots of transparency. We don't have any of that yet. So uh, pushing in that direction. Second, Trade agreements can be good or bad. A level playing field in trade can produce jobs and wealth on both sides of that e equation. But consider the challenge if you have high wage, high environmental standards, high enforcement in the same circle as low wage, low environmental standards, low enforcement. Now you can create a race to the bottom where the most if you will, determined contractors and subcontractors say we're going to find the cheapest spot in the world and the result of predatory conditions for the workers and jobs disappearing from everywhere else. Do you remember Ross Perot's statement, giant sucking sound of, of how an unequal trade agreement would suck jobs out of the United States? We did lose, we have lost uh, on the order of five million jobs since 1998 in manufacturing. We've lost 50,000 factories. And so the, when we actually have uh, a, a real treaty to look at, uh, I'm going to want it to be fully vetted and hear back from Oregonians. And my concern will be, will, is this a level playing field that creates jobs or an unequal that will pull jobs out of the United States and further undermine middle class Americans? For this reason, at this point, I'm very skeptical about a fast track. Let's first have the treaty and have it fully vetted by the public and then talk about how the bill would be addressed. Um, I guess, and you know, I like to try to give everyone a chance to have feedback on some of these. Of those, if you've heard of TPP, how many folks are pretty excited about it and think it may be a good thing for our economy? How many folks uh, have heard about it and are, have some real concerns about it? Okay. Thank you all very much.
Ticket number 241. Dave Berger, I live across the river. And I, I spent some time in Africa like you did too. And, and first I want to thank you on the coal thing. I mean, I think the coal is a global issue and there really are solutions to this. And I recently read a country that I lived in, Kenya, is claiming that they're going to go to 20, by 2016 to 50% uh, solar electricity. If Kenya can have a vision like that, even if it's just a vision, what's happening here? I mean, we seem to be controlled by multinational corporations. If you burn coal, it's obviously bad for climate change. Denying that, it's, it's terrible for human health. So if we go to a high renewable energy effort where we're going to get 50% renewable energy by, say, 2025, we would create a massive amount of jobs we would reduce health care costs, and, and we would begin to tackle some of the climate change issues. And we start to be a country of patriots, a country that actually believes we can create work for ourselves besides multinational corporations and the military-industrial complex. And to add that, I was really disappointed on the dropping of the high-speed rail funding, because that's also connected to the issue. But thank you for your efforts on, on uh, coal. Uh, so, I think what we have to realize is carbon pollution is an attack on our rural resources. It is an attack on our farming, our fishing, and our forests. And let me explain. This is not something generations down the road. If you tour Oregon right now, a lot of the issues we're dealing with are related to carbon pollution. We have the third worst ever drought in the Klamath in 2013, and that's in a 13 year period, three worst ever, and based on the, the snowpack or the lack thereof in the Cascades right now, we may have a, a fourth very terrible uh, climate drought. We had the worst forest fires uh, summer before last in 100 years uh, here in Oregon. And uh, part of the reason was the number of lightning strikes have, with the changing weather patterns have increased. Uh, the, uh, the amount of rainfall has decreased. The, the forests are drier. There's also some big hazardous fuel and thinning and second growth issues tied up in there. but. Uh, there is an estimate that has come out of the, uh, the Department of Energy that between the pine beetle explosion, because there's not enough cold weather to knock them back, knock them down, and the forest fires, uh, that the western forests are going to be deeply degraded uh, by the year 2100 from these, these two carbon pollution issues. And if you like to fish, well, what we have with a smaller snowpack are smaller, warmer streams, not at all ideal for trout. And over on the coast, we've had a 25% increase in the acidity of the ocean because the oceans absorb the carbon, and that's carbonic acid. And uh, the result is that the baby oysters are having trouble reproducing and being distributed to the oyster farmers. And it's a harbinger of things to come because the, the pH level or acidic level affects shell formation. And so if it's affecting oysters today, who knows what it's going to affect uh, down down the road. Uh, so uh, when we talk about it in this way, it's not some theor theoretical future issue. It's here, and you can see it in our. And we've only had uh, what equates to basically uh, a 0.7 degree Celsius increase in temperature, uh, 0.7 to 0.8. But with just the carbon we have in the atmosphere right now, if it was left there, we added no more new carbon. That was this would double. Uh, and just because of the ongoing warming effects of the carbon we've already put in there. And it, um, I'm trying not to throw too many numbers here, but uh, when we started burning fossil fuels, at the start of that period, the Earth had been about 270 parts per million carbon. And now it's climbed to 400. And when it had just hit 400 this last year. On the way, folks said, you know, by the time we hit 350, we have got to start reducing our carbon production. So by the time we hit 400, we're starting to come back down. But the fact is, it's going up at twice the rate it was 30 years ago. 30 years ago, we were getting one part per million per year increase on the planet. Now we're at two parts per million per, per year. So in 10 more years, it'll, it'll be 420, if you, if you will, rather than, than 400. This is a huge challenge to human civilization on this planet. And we have got to replace the fossil carbon with non uh, carbon sources, uh, or we are not being good stewards uh, for the next generation and the generations to come. Uh, so uh, much work to be done here in the United States. There's 